Well, you've seen the Islander. Welcome to the Trilander. Hi guys, I'm Avenger. Welcome back to the channel. And this is the latest iteration uh, from Black Box Simulations of their Islander series, the Trilander. Yes, there's three. So the naming convention? Yeah, three. This is a weird and wonderful plane. And it is visually, I'd say, the same class of aircraft in terms of a flight sim model as the Islander. So if you got on well with that one and like that one, you'll like this one too. This one actually has a lot more functionality, which is kind of cool. Now, to start off, this has a load of liveries and versions. We come with both the Islander BN2A Mark III, the Mark III I, the Mark III II. We have a cargo version. We have the short nose version as well. There's tons here. If you're looking for a bang for your buck release, this one has quite a lot with it. I've got to say. Now, the Islander itself was originally developed in the 80s and 70s. In fact, it first flew in 1970 on September 11th. Now, they were built in the Isle of Wight and in Romania. They've stopped producing them now, unfortunately. Now, they, these are only built in 19, about 10 years there. Performance-wise, it can get about 160 knots at sea level, max speed. Cruises about 135 at about 60% power at about 13,000 feet. This thing has a range of nearly 890 nautical miles, which is pretty impressive. And considering its takeoff and landing rolls are under 2,000 feet, pretty impressively short takeoff and landing for an aircraft with 18 seats that is not a turboprop. Without further ado, let's take a look at the aircraft. So we'll go outside first, of course. And I'd say this is about on par with what we expect from black box simulations. It's visually, I'd say, a decent job. The model does have some flat spots in places, but in general, good representation of the aircraft. Now, you're not going to get a huge number of options when it comes to these cool and unusual airplanes, so I really like it. I think it's more than enough. Frankly, I've seen some beautifully gorgeous, stunning 8K, breathtaking 3D models that suck as airplanes. I'm going to put that out there first. Now, I was given a copy of this by uh, the guys at Black Box Simulations. I bought the Islander myself, and this one was given to me, but I will be just as honest as I was with that review. Uh, I like to think that's what's expected of me at this point, but the aircraft is unique. So I'm perfectly happy with it not being some 8K hyperpoly monster. I love it. It's a fun and unique aircraft. Now, let's go inside and take a look. There was some backlash about the uh, weathered look in the Islander. This one is a lot cleaner and smoother. And, of course, it has all the functionality we'd really want from it. As uh, we, of course, the, the roof's still a little bit low resolution for my tastes. But the aircraft is overall quite cool. Now... Oh, bloody hell, of course. And just like that... I have fixed my quadrant because you can have profiles in MSFS, which is wonderful. I can have a profile set up for three throttles, which is great. I love it. And of course, I'm going to have to control my prop manually, but we can we can live with that. Same with mixture. I don't have nine levers, unfortunately. So let's get rid of these and take a quick look around. Now, what is rather cool is, of course, we have these switches to open all these various doors and hatches. So... Back row and cargo has one door, then every other row has two rows per door, leaving two doors on each side. We have forward baggage, and we have rear cargo, which is quite cool. I love aircraft with operational doors and cargo doors. I think it adds so much more to the role play and the realism of the flight sim experience, which to me is a huge component. So let's close this down here. Now, of course, you can operate the storm windows and you'll get a lot of noise when you do that in the sim. Now, functionally, this is described as study level. Now, I think everything that can work in the sim works. So the air conditioning doesn't function, but it's not like it do anything anyway in the simulator. Whereas when it comes to our external power, batteries and generators, port starboard and battery, of course, they all function. The icing systems do function in this, of course, as well, as do a number of the other features in the aircraft. So we have got plenty of things to consider. Now, we have got, of course, here our panel lighting. And as you'll notice, the LEDs 
change in their intensity on the little LED housings. Which is kind of nice. And we get that change in brightness from those. We'll leave this on because we'll switch it to night mode in a bit. But uh, we also have our meter source for our readings there to give us our indications. Uh, engine anti-ice, you'll need to use this because it can and will happen. Audio panel, we have trans uh, ADF, we have transponder, navcom radios, GTN530, which I'm not sure if this is compatible with the uh, GTN750s out there, but we'll find out. This is, of course, a, not a final release. This is a beta version, so I've been given early access to it. It's not the full exact release, so we'll find out. We have autopilot, of course, as well. Now, upstairs, we have the fuel selectors, so I'm going to make sure we... When I find the click spot, because it can be a little bit weird sometimes. No, you want to go that way. Thank you. Could you? Good, there we go. Thank you. Very useful. Let's turn our mags on. Beacon is on. Those are good to go. These are our transfer pumps for fuel. We have our transfer system there, all operational. Let's put our pumps on here. Right. We have got fuel pressure looking at our instruments. Looks good. Okay, so let's give her a start. We'll crack these open. Make sure parking brake is set. And we'll start the engines. Starting rear. Good solid start. Starting port. Good start. And starting starboard. Note the volt changes and the amp changes there. So we have three good live engines there. Let's pull this back here. Let's take our parking brake off now. Now I'm just going to spin up the port engine. This thing does not like to turn very much when it's on the ground, so you'll want to use the engine separately if you can. It's a big advantage. So let's get my head turned on here. Now I'll bring up all three throttles at once, but at the same time, I'm probably just going to use the center engine because you can get a bit too much thrust to taxi when you're actually taxiing this thing. I do want to address something, actually, because I consider this a personal kind of taste matter when it comes to the sim. It's very easy for a lot of people to become very hateful about various things. And people have compared the quality of the texturing and the visual acuity in the black box aircraft to, say, Carinado. Carinado grabs a 3D model, go plonk, plonk, plonk. Textures look great. Looks really good. But sometimes there are, you know, behavior issues in terms of how they perform. I've always found the black box aircraft for this sim to be incredibly good flying aircraft. They're realistic flying aircraft. And the flight models are very good. The sounds have been incredible. In fact, they've gotten better considerably. Um, but the biggest thing for me is that the support is there. Like, these look more than good. And for the prices that they charge, it's just a very good bargain. You get tons of versions of an aircraft that's very functional, lots to do and use, and most importantly, massive support. Bugs get fixed, and features get added. WY sound packs came to the other aircraft that, had, that didn't have them when they were released, like the Bird Dog, the Islander, They've had like eight, nine patches and updates each. So there's lots and lots of support for the products. So right, uh, flaps to take off position. Let's taxi ourselves out here onto the runway here at Zell Amistad in Austria. This is the Gaia Simulations one, available through Orbex, by the way, in case anyone's curious. Yeah, it's got a sluggish turning radius, but we'll be okay. Okay, all three throttles. Smoothly up to full power here. Let's get this thing rolling. Now it can have a very heavy nose. Good speed. We're going to rotate here. Give it lots of back trim. Let's pull those flaps in. You'll notice quite a big drop on the nose with how far back the wings are. So I'm going to keep the trim being applied here. And it will climb like a bit of a rocket ship, by the way. 
This is our climate angle. Pretty extreme. And I'm holding that speed. It sounds like an angry bee, which is accurate to the Trilanders and Islanders. They have a very kind of waspy sound to them, so... That 3D sound sounding very good. Okay, bring her up and around here. We'll bank it across to the port side. Bring that power back, in fact. I really want to bring the props back, but at the same time, I have no control set up with that right now. This is, I should have had that set to one throttle rather than uh, two. two of them. But it's... Having to flip around my control axes is always such a massive pain. So for now, we'll just leave them at full. We're staying in the pattern, so it should be okay. The aircraft feels very sluggish, but it responds very well. That's something I like about it. Let's level her out here a little bit. So power is set nicely. Now, the fixed gear does look a little bit weird, of course, but... It is a relatively quick aircraft, even despite that, and it's it's like a baby DC-10 with that tail engine. I find it always so hilariously adorable. Definitely a fun plane. Really good for things like NeoFly, for FS Economy, for other of those economic kind of add-ons for your flight sim experience. This ends up being usually in those, those games a very cheap option for you to get, so always an option to consider. Like I said, this has been described as study level in terms of its functionality, so whilst, you know, people might disagree with this appearance or that appearance, the systems all work, everything behaves like it should, and every procedure in the manual you can actually use. Let's pull this power back here. We are quite close to the ridge, which is not ideal. Let's bring that around. Oh, this is going to be a fairly steep approach. We'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, speed is still quite high. This is surprisingly a slippery aeroplane. No, I'm going to be way too fast. We're going to have to go around for a second shot at this, so... I can already tell you I'm not going to make that. Let's keep our altitude a little bit lower this time. Call this one a missed approach. Now, for us, an aircraft that's this dirty in terms of its airframe, it is surprisingly slippery. Um, but not in the way you expect. Like it, once it has speed, it will keep it relatively well. It once you put flaps in, though, it really dumps the speed. You have to be very careful, and you'll need quite a bit of throttle uh, to keep your approach angle. But the flaps really do help. bring around here. One thing I also like, by the way, is that these are not just two positions. You can actually set them to where you want them, which is quite a nice functionality there. Oh, and because people I've seen these things at night time whilst I'm in the circuit are not going to crash at all. Let's quickly change this to night time. A very well illuminated um, cabin. Of course, we've got the cabin lights on here as well. With really, really beautifully visible instruments at night. This is quite a nice perk. I will say the visibility is really well done. The lighting patterns look very natural. And of course, as I mentioned, we can turn that down so it's even less obstructive. So let's put that back to daytime and get ourselves ready for our landing. Because doing this in the pattern is really not the brightest idea. Come on, open up, thank you. Prepare your eyes. Boom. Okay, let's pull this power back early now so we'll bleed some of the speed off in our base turn. We're definitely bleeding off that now. With a bit more power just to make sure we stay away from that hill. Okay, take off first stage flaps. Nose high here. A little bit of power. We should be fine. We're above the trees. They just look closer on that side because it's a slope. A 
very nose high angle right now. This is slightly shallow, but the approach at Zalamse is actually not ideal for this. It can do it just fine, it's just my approach is bad. Let's go to full flaps here. Pull that power back now. Lower the aircraft's nose. And you'll feel this drop like a rock, so we'll actually have to put a little bit more in there. Back pressure is medium. Let's give it a little bit of trim whilst we're established on final. Just keep the nose up because it's quite an aft centre of gravity. Stabilise. Late display threshold here at ZLMSA. Power to round out. just to give me a little bit of a boost as we'll pull the... That was a bit of a clunker, but not the worst I've ever had. Flaps coming up. And overall, not a bad aeroplane. I like this. It's weird, it's unusual, and it's actually quite a bit of fun. And it's a handful. It's a very manual aircraft, and that's one thing I quite like, is that it's an aircraft that you will really have to fly. There's no shortcuts to this. Sure, you've got an autopilot, but it takes manhandling, which is accurate to the real one. You've really got to give this thing a shove. There are some aircraft that require you to get the elbow grease out for, and this is definitely one of them. It's an interesting concept. Nowhere near as nice to fly as the Islander. It feels a lot heavier and clunkier. But for those quirky, weird planes that have this strange behavior, it is very, very correct in that regard. You, you will build up biceps flying this aeroplane. Especially if you have one of the heavier yokes, like the honeycomb, um, where there's a lot more pounds uh, of pressure in the actual pitch axis. You'll build up your arms in this plane. It is, uh, it is a bit of a feisty one. This is no light, this little gentle one finger on the yoke job. This is a fist on the yoke job. I'm sure somebody will make some sort of lewd comment about that, so feel free, be my guest. Well, we'll look at the Bouncy Castle, which we haven't tested it at in flight yet, but I'm sure at some point I will. Uh, let's cut the power on this one. Oh, what do we think of the Trilander? It is a ugly duckling, pig to fly, but it has so much character. And by pig, I mean that in a good way. It, it, it feels right. Everything I've heard of these things in flight is that they are awkward and obstinate and somehow loved. They are cherished by the people that fly them because they are so weird and unique. And it is capable. It has good payload. And it lives up to that weird and unique tendency while still being relatively practical. It's been well made, everything functions as it should, everything works as you'd want it to, and based on their current pricing module mod models, I should say, and I don't have an exact number, unfortunately, for what this will actually cost yet, but it will be reasonable based on their past trends. This is expected out by the end of the month, so hopefully we'll see that on the Black Box website and later the Marketplace. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye!